Hey, it's Tom from Tom's Tunes. I'm gonna give you the crash course today on installing a basic stereo in your pontoon boat. We're looking at the Garmin Fusion MSRA55. It's a Bluetooth stereo system. Super simple, easy to install, simple to operate. I have this on our Tritune and I love it. Easy to change the zones from the front seats to the back seats, etc. We've already installed the head unit. It's just four screws, a couple caps that cover up uh, into the back. I'm gonna be able to get at all the wiring from behind and I'll show you what that all looks like. This is a unit fresh out of the box. So we have our auxiliary inputs. Maybe if you're doing something a little bit fancier, this might not be the unit for you if you're doing subs, amps, all that, there might be a better option. But for no amps, no subs, just four basic speakers. This has been an awesome option for us. The main things that we're concerned with here are going to be this big plug. So this is what our speaker wires are essentially going to plug into. You also have an antenna plug, and we like to use the little wrap antenna uh, that doesn't have to go through the dash. It just lays underneath. They're like five bucks on Amazon. They seem to work really, really well if you're using the AM FM features. So what's going to plug into this is this pigtail, and they've done a really good job of telling us what speakers each of these wires correspond with. Zone two, left speaker, so that would be my back left speaker. Really easy, we'll show you how this all ties in. I just wanna show you what it looks like new out of the box. The speakers we're installing are the Deckmate speakers or six and a half inch speaker from pontoonstuff.com. We've installed these on dozens and dozens of boats. No one's complained. They actually have great sound for a $30 price point. We're using 16 gauge install gear wire, stuff you can find on Amazon, and even the Garmin head unit you can find on Amazon. What I'm gonna do is just one by one, I'm gonna run my wire down from each speaker, come back in, I'll splice that into my harness here, for each corresponding speaker. That way I can keep things nice and tidy, make sure every speaker is connected to the proper input for the stereo head unit. Uh, and then I'll show you how the power and ground hook up too. So really straightforward. I'm just gonna go ahead and push that wire down through. Once I get it started, I just leave my spool of wire resting right here. I'm gonna go underneath the boat and pull down through, take all the slack I need to run across the boat and then over to the console and up. So underneath the boat here, you can see my wire coming down. I'm just gonna pull and it gives me all the slack I need. I'm gonna stay nice and close behind this cross member here. That way I can run it across. I'm gonna avoid going on the top or on the bottom side of any of these. So we'll run across the wood. I can tie it up later with some plastic clips. We'll run it across through here and then back to the helm. I've got my wire, pushed it up through, take that extra slack. I like to go ahead and give myself a little extra to work with. So I'm gonna leave, I know I need to go about two, three feet up to the head unit. So I'm gonna give myself about three feet and then I can splice into that pigtail that's gonna plug into the back of the stereo. This wire coming up is my zone one left speaker. Front left speaker, that's my zone one left. So I'll find my corresponding wire. In this case, zone one left speaker is white and white with a black stripe. This is gonna connect, the solid white is gonna connect to my red or my positive of my speaker wire. And then the black stripe will go to my black or ground of the speaker wire. I'm gonna go ahead and use a heat shrink butt splice to tie this in, and then we'll move on to zone one right speaker. We were spliced in here for that front left speaker. I'll heat shrink everything down when I get them all spliced together. There's one other thing I'm gonna do to the speaker side of this wire before we move on. And then I'll just repeat the process for the front right the back left and the back right speakers. Got our spool here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. I'll leave myself a little extra. I know I've got plenty of slack, 
so I'm not too worried about it. But I'll leave myself about a foot here. The speaker's probably, you know, five or six inches above the bottom, but I like to have a little extra slack. And then one of the first things I always do is I tie a knot. So I like it, if anybody ever grabs this wire from below or something snags on it, I like for this to not get pulled off the speaker. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little overhand knot in the line, just a soft knot like that. And that way, if it gets pulled on, it's not gonna pull this right off the speaker and lose sound. The next thing that we need to look at is we have a positive, that's your bigger terminal here, and a negative over here for our connections. So same thing, I'm gonna take my red wire, my positive, I'm gonna put a splice on it, a spade splice that's gonna go ahead and tie on here, and then the same thing for that negative. This is what those splices look like. So we'll feed our wire in that side, and this side will feed on. For that negative, sometimes I do pinch this down just a little bit with pliers, so that it fits on that small post. That's what they look like, pinched on or crimped on. We'll heat shrink those down too before we install them. But the black will go on that smaller post, the red will go on that bigger post. Some speakers, they're the same size post and they'll be labeled positive and negative. We can adjust the knot position too, so that there's not too much slack once these are plugged in. But all we're gonna do once we heat shrink them down is just slide them right on each terminal. You can bend them up a little bit if you need to. But it's that simple for installing the speaker wires. I'm gonna repeat that step on all of the other speakers and then we'll talk about the power source. We have all four of our wires spliced in for our speakers. And then our last thing is we're gonna take this black wire as our ground. So that's gotta to go to a ground, a common ground for the power source. This red wire is gonna be our power source. So this I'm wiring to a switch on this switch panel. Uh, in that case, I'm gonna run it so that when I flip the switch on, I can have power to my stereo. That way if the switch is off, I'm not gonna drain the battery down. Uh, our yellow is our dim or trigger. This would be if you have a source for your lights that the screen can dim. You have to tie that into the lights of the boat. Not usually super applicable uh, for pontoon, so we'll omit that. And then this would be a wire for your amplifier so that when the amp turns on, you get power to the amp, the stereo will power up too. So all I'm gonna be concerned with is the ground and the power wire. I'm gonna splice those in over to my switch panel so we can get power to our stereo head unit to make some music. There we go, we're spliced to, this is 16 gauge wire, and I'm just gonna use this on a battery for now because my switch panel is not all set up yet. So we'll keep it simple just for display purposes. All I've gotta do now is keep my wires in order, take this up underneath and plug it in. Let's do that. We're under the console, I've got my plug. It's gonna plug in right here. And it can only go one way, so there's a little slot here. That's where this guy is gonna go. You'll hear it click in place just like that. There's that little, I don't know what they call it. Uh, this is an antenna, and it's all wrapped up, but this works really well for getting AM, FM. I just tuck it up on the console, you could tie it or let it run around, but works really well. Let's go see how it sounds. We've got power to it, let's power it on. It's set on FM right now. If we wanna change modes, all we have to do is click this button, Bluetooth, it's not connected. If I wanna connect, all I have to do, we'll go back here, is hit this back button, discoverable, I can click that and it fills that little dot in. That's gonna allow me to go to my Bluetooth settings in my phone, and then I can go ahead and connect to this device. It'll show up in your phone as MSRA55. We're gonna go back. We'll go through, we have, there is an auxiliary plugin if you use that, but most of the time it tends to just be our Bluetooth from our phone. So we can click here, we'll go to a different FM station. If you like country, 
they're easy to forget. But so important, air duct cleaning removes. We are in a big warehouse, so I don't get great uh, reception no matter what, but the antenna takes it from zero rece reception to more. So I like to go around and make sure all my speakers are working. From there, really easy setting on this for your zones. So you'll see that when I turn the volume up, where on both zones, volume goes up and down. If I push this once, I'm on zone one. That's my front speakers. So I can raise the volume of the front speakers or bring it down to where you only hear the back. So if there's people in the front talking, they want it quiet, you're in the back by yourself, click over and you can turn that zone two up. All it is is a push of the button. Now when I push it again, it takes it back to both zones. Really simple, zone one, zone two, both zones. Commercials, always commercials on the radio. Powers right off. That is the Garmin Fusion MS RA55. It's an a uh, unit you can get on Amazon. They're around $130, $150. Again, the blue, uh, it's a Bluetooth stereo. Our speakers are deckmate speakers from pontoonstuff.com. Six and a half inch, great speakers for $30 a piece. Pretty awesome unit. For a fraction of the cost, what you can spend. If you just like listening to music, hanging out with your friends, you're not trying to play music for the whole lake, this is a great option for you.